or well, how we've created the actual illustrations for Little Red Bird, I should say. We're starting here with the original storyboard that Jordan sent me over. The rabbit is in the tree, crazy rabbit. There's the rabbit with the happy bird and the happy baby birds. It's a wonderful drawing. I have, I'm lucky to work with him. I've got a lot more to work with than most illustrators would have. <laughs> he can draw very well. Some of his drawings are better than the finals. Um, this one we wound up changing a lot, a lot more than most of them. Um, because once the colors and the characters are established, uh, it went for more climactic beginning. So I popped this guy in the grass in and grabbed up uh, the previous page of reference. This is the actual tree that um, our, our baby bird's tree is based on. These frames we've changed on every page so that they kind of move around and jive around. Um, we also decided to change the text for this last page because uh, it was originally written for people in Taiwan and when Taiwan uh, when Taiwanese hear uh, Crazy Rabbit, they don't immediately think tricks are for kids. Um, now that we're selling it all over, well, not selling it all over, now that we're giving it away all over, we need to change those words to <laughs> something else. So, I, uh, now I'm into the um, drawing uh, part of it. I'm just sketching in the bones for where these characters are going to go. Now, this is going ten times normal speed. I don't do not actually draw this fast. Um, this is ten times normal speed. Um, which is the most it would let me do. Okay, so I've lightened up that layer. We're going to wind up making these lines three times in an attempt to get uh, nice, tight, flowing lines. Um, and this is standard procedure for me um, to, to go three times. So I've lightened that for a skeleton layer, and now I'm adding in a tighter version, and then we'll do one more version for each of the characters. This is all three characters together. Um, I've decided to have the baby birds come out of the nest and hop on to the rabbit who they now love because he saved them um, and because he's crazy and cute he's like the crazy old uncle um, the, uh, the nice guy the crazy old uncle <laughs> alright so I popped in the nest and I added out the eggs using brushes and blur tools um, yep, there we go gone uh, I am now warping the texture for the branch so that it looks more like a branch. One of the things we decided, and you could see really quickly there how, how this kind of works, one of the things we decided about the little red bird was that we wanted it to be very texture rich. Kids love textures, they love putting things in their mouth, they love knowing how things feel, and so we have very feeling based drawings, or we're trying to have very feeling based drawings, I don't mean emotionally feeling, I mean tactile. Um, you can see that I'm, I'm using for these colors, I'm not just using paint buckets or uh, broad fills, I'm using actual textures from the actual animals, so like that was a, that's a rabbit for um, that it, it, it looks like it should feel like a rabbit would feel like, you know, fluffy and fuzzy. Okay, now I'm popping in the final line um, over this texture, um, which is, uh, I'm using clipping masks to uh, pop the textures in where I want them. I've made a couple of awful mistakes, which I'm about to discover uh, with the rabbit. Here I'm p opening up the previous page because I realize that I've made an error. I'm opening up the previous page so I can get a reference on how the rabbit's face should actually look. And um, the first thing I realized is that his left ear is too far over, which I'll get to in a second. Um, here you can see this is actual rabbit skin texture with light shining through it from behind that uh, we use for the rabbit's inner ear. Okay, now I've realized it. And I'm moving the ear over to better reflect um, the perspective that would actually be there. I've uh, reattached his ear now to the back of his skull. Um, rather than to his eyebrow, because ears don't come out of eyebrows. That's crazy. Uh, and then I extended his skull back a little bit, so he's actually tilting his head back into space. Now I've realized that the eyes are too low, and this was the other bad mistake I made. Um, and I'm bringing up these mistakes and showing them because, you know, I want it to be clear that there's... Uh, this is not a perfect science, you know. Where it takes um, all kinds of trial and errors and undos and redos and... Um, mistakes to get to a final image. Uh, here I'm messing now with the front tuft of fur. Um, I've got a couple of tangents going on. You can barely tell what's happening in that space. Uh, and I also remember Fred Graff's rule that you never use even numbers, just odd numbers. So I want three tufts of fur and I make them a little bigger and that just looks a lot better. So we keep it like that. So the opacity to change the whole hue. Oh, and this is my favorite part of the rabbit. Um, Jordan suggested using human eyes uh, actual spherical, glossy, 
creepy looking eyeball <laughs> for the rabbit and uh, at first I thought he was just nuts and then I used it and it turns out that it's actually really cute. I thought it would just be creepy but I, uh, that's cute uh, to me anyway. I think he's, that that's pretty adorable. Um, oh, here's what I'm talking about with the opacity now. Uh, so rather than messing with all these colors, you just get those values right and then set it back in there with the opacity the layer. Um, all of this is happening, I should say, for people who don't know about Photoshop, all of this is happening on what are basically a bunch of glass panels. Oh, and here I'm re-editing the text again to include goodbye rabbit, goodbye um, baby birds, goodbye little red bird. Um, I don't know if that's going to be final on the final page, but, um, you know, Jordan still has to agree that that's a nice way to end the book. Um, that just kind of occurred to me as I was messing around with the rest of it. Um, I've also at this point decided to give the baby birds um, waving hands. Okay, so here's the baby bird with his waving hand. Um, the baby birds are fun to draw because uh, they're simple and kind of adorable. And uh, yeah, they're just fun to draw. So here comes the primer for him. Now I've used actual chicks, actual chick tes textures. Why not uh, for the baby birds? So they're just as fuzzy as can be, um, fuzzy little buggers. They 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 do look actually fuzzy, um, which is fun. I mean, I've used a toucan for their beaks um, because a toucan has these cool stripes in its beak that uh, it's just got the coolest beak, man. It's, I mean, you know, it's a toucan. That's what toucans have the coolest beak ever designed by nature. Um, and the purple of the eye is actually a skin texture, um, very much like a skin texture you'd find on an actual little baby bird. It's just colored purple instead of uh, skin. And then I add a little more character with the eyebrows, uh, get that wing over the uh, rest of the body, tighten them up, and the pink bird is done. Yay! Fly back in to do the purple bird. Hey, purple bird. The purple bird goes through some pretty uh, big changes, if I remember correctly. Um, yeah, I decided to make his mouth open at the last second. Um, and that means that he doesn't get a worm. At least not in this instant. Uh, we'll just assume that he got a worm at a previous time. I wanted to have one of their mouths open, like, for super happy, you know. So, there's that. Grab the purple chicks. Mess around with it, find the perfect place to lay that down there. I'm using a blur tool to kind of get that texture right. You know, I've added the clipping mask and pop the texture in where it goes. Yay! I struggled a bit with his beak. Getting those lines in there tight was... Yeah, you can see me messing with it. Um, getting those lines in there to tighten up and look right is not uh, the funnest or part of the drawing. Um, there's his dark mouth. Oh, there we go. Um, <laughs> I realized towards the end that every time I zoomed back into the uh, drawing, I was um, zooming into the rabbit's crotch. I was that wasn't intentional. Sorry about that. It, it, it just kind of made me look at the rabbit's crotch over and over and over. It took a while to figure out where. In fact, I got it wrong the first two times. I think where to put this uh, chick texture over the yellow baby bird. Um, I wanted him darker than the other two. Um, but this is too dark. This is right around the actual chick's eyes. Um, I struggled with this little critter more than any other character in the uh, drawing. It just took a while to get it to look quite right. And here I am messing with the texture again. And uh, that's what I wound up going with. I really like that one. It's got almost like a parody feel, um, that placement of the texture map. Sorry, sorry, the texture, some texture map. Um, Yeah, so I'm struggling with something's not looking right with him, so I'm messing around to make him look back at the camera. Um, finally, and then finally I figure out that his arms shouldn't be that far out, that they look funky. So I do some pretty uh, huge warping. Um, one cool thing that you can do with Adobe uh, is warp the snot out of stuff. So I just warp this worm straight up to get it to fit so we have a neat worm texture in there and then edit it in. Um, same over here. Warp that. 
Um, takes a little bit of messing around, a little bit of tweaking here and there. But there you go, there's the worst thing that Sweet. All right, now we're on to the bird. Um, you can tell that I've drawn the bird more than the baby birds. He just kind of like falls together, or it falls together. I guess it's a he or she. We've, we've not included any uh, gender identifiers in the book so that um, it's appropriate for everyone's kids. Um, Um, I've pulled up another page for reference. I want to keep the characters nice and consistent. I want the proportions to be nice and consistent so it's not looking like just a mod podge of different illustrations all piled on top of each other. We really tried to create the sense as you're going through the book that there's actually a camera moving through space, you know, capturing these cartoon characters. Um, and the pictures themselves create the narrative. They tell the entire story. Uh, and you can see, if you, if you watch it as you're reading through the book, you can see exactly where the camera's moving back and forth and uh, through three-dimensional space. The chicks in the nest, specifically, if you watch them actually like rotate around with the camera uh, as it moves. Of course, they're, I mean, they're not moving yeah, three-dimensional space. And we screwed up at the time, I'm not sure. <laughs> but this is fun. Uh, this was a fun thing to do. Getting the toucan to line up with the mother bird's beat bill was act is actually pretty fun. And then you wind up with this cool like lion texture on the uh, on the bird's mouth, well, which I enjoy. Um, and there I'm using a blur tool to blur the uh, outside of the reflection uh, in the uh, in, in, sorry in the bird's eye, which is a, a, a fun trick. And now we got the final primaries on the branch and on the uh, grass. Give it that. Give it that. Let me just do a quick little line on the grass. And now the shader layer. The shader layer is probably my favorite part of the whole project. Um, I just do one layer for all the shading. Set, set the opacities down so that you can kind of see through the layer and then just shade away and it only takes a couple minutes really um, for something this for something this simple um, it doesn't really need a lot of detail in the shading you know? um, so I grab a blur tool and just kind of smudge stuff around uh, make it all kind of fit together erase where the shading is not supposed to be and um, yeah there you have it uh, that's the final illustration. Well, I don't know if it's final, final, but um, yeah, I hope you enjoyed, and uh, that's what it takes to make one page of uh, the little red bird. And I should also mention that that is a way sped up version, too. This is my last page, so, um, you know, I've done them all before, all the textures were collected, the rest of the pages took quite a bit longer. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed watching, and uh, bye. Talk to you later. Thank you.